So the topic today is uh, plasma versus blood donations. And we have a wonderful young lady speaking today. I met her many years ago, or not that many years ago, actually. She used to be, she used to be the president of the student union at U of Lethbridge. So she has some experience in governance. Uh, without further ado, I invite Brenda Scott to come up. Give, please give her a warm welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brenna Scott, and I'm the business development manager at the Lethbridge Plasma Center. Before I get into it, how is this for sound? Can everyone, we're good? Wonderful. So, Oki, here in Lethbridge, we acknowledge and deeply appreciate the Siksapi people's connection to their traditional territory. We, as people living and benefiting from the Blackfoot Confederacy traditional territory, honor the traditions of people who have cared for this land since time immemorial. We recognize the diverse population of the Indigenous peoples in Lethbridge and acknowledge the contributions these Indigenous peoples have made in shaping and strengthening. Oh, you guys are getting a preview. <laughs> in strengthening the Lethbridge city in the past, present, and in the future. We recognize the lands and waters that have inspired our work and offer gratitude to those Indigenous peoples on whose territory we work, live, and play. So today I'll be sharing more about Canadian Blood Services. We'll be talking about our plasma centre, what plasma is, what it's used for, and why it's so important. And then I look forward to any questions that you might all have at the end. So our mission with Canadian Blood Services is that we are Canada's biological lifeline. Our vision is to help every patient, to match every need, and to serve every Canadian. These core values, operational pillars, and mission apply across Canada for blood, stem cells, organs and tissues, and plasma. So our strategy with Canadian Blood Services is to meet the changing patient needs by providing life-saving products and services. It's to build and deepen relationships with the donors of the future, to ensure a secure supply of Canadian plasma for immune globulin, and to create an engaging and empowering employee experience. So our main focus of today's conversation will be about the secure supply of Canadian plasma. So a little bit more background on Canadian Blood Services. We were founded in 1998 based on recommendations from the Creva Report following the tainted blood tragedy. We are dedicated to improving patient outcomes through the manufacturing and delivery of safe, relevant, quality products and services to all Canadians. Volunteers, partnered organizations, community groups, generous donors, and employees make all of our work possible. So in my role as business development manager, we're the connection between the sincere generosity of donors and the heartfelt appreciation of recipients. Donated plasma touches the lives and families of thousands of patients who require life-saving therapies and treatments made from plasma-derived protein products. Looking at our other product lines, we have stem cells, specifically blood stem cells, which are immature cells that can develop in any cell present in the bloodstream. If you're between the ages of 17 to 35, you could be a rare stem cell match for a patient in need. We also work with the organ and donation and transplantation community to develop leading practices, professional education, public awareness, and data analysis and reporting. The primary focus of today's conversation is our management of that national supply of plasma and how it helps patients all across Canada. As some of you are likely aware, we do only collect plasma here in Lethbridge and I will get to why that decision was made. So what is plasma? Plasma is a protein rich yellow liquid that helps our body and other blood components like red cells, white cells and platelets all circulate throughout the body. It makes up about 55% of your total body's blood volume. It supports the immune system and helps control excessive bleeding. And with that color on the screen there, that is the color of plasma. So it's often like a chicken broth or an apple juice. It is that light orangey color. 
Through the process of fractionation, donated plasma is used to create specialized life-saving medications, or what we call plasma protein products. Now, does anyone know, you can either yell out or think in your head of how often you can donate plasma? Once a week. Seven days. 14 days. Once a week. Okay, the answer is once a week, but it used to be seven days for men and 14 days for women, but now we just recently changed it, so you are eligible to, well, to donate every seven days. So great job, I heard a lot of you had the right answer. The young boy in this photo, his name is Hayden, and he's actually one of our plasma recipients. And on the bed there, that's his mom, Shannon, donating plasma for the first time when we opened our first plasma center in Sudbury. A little more into plasma. Um, with plasma, as mentioned, it is 55% of your blood volume, contains proteins with antibodies. These antibodies then help protect from infection, repair and heal tissues, and help control bleeding and form clots. So if you see on the screen there, that is what your blood's made up of. So if you've donated whole blood, technically you have donated plasma in the past, as plasma is a part of it. Where now we're looking to just keep that plasma part and give the rest of your blood back to you. So a little bit more about the donation process. So the process of collecting plasma is called plasma apheresis. It's still just the one needle in your arm. Your blood comes out as it would be in whole blood. And then the machine beside you, what we call a nexus machine, has a centrifuge in the middle. So this is what the centrifuge looks like. That's in the middle of the plasma machine. This spins very, very quickly, and it actually spins your plasma out of your whole blood. Then we collect the plasma in a bottle, you'll see in the on the screen there, there's a nice plasma machine beside one of our donors, Lane, and all your plasma is collected in one of these bottles. The rest of your blood that was spun out, those red blood cells, those platelets, are all given back to the donor, all through that one needle. So we do that back and forth process until we have a, a full donation. And how much you're able to donate is based on your height and weight. So donation for plasma does take a little bit longer than whole blood. If some of you have donated whole blood in the past, I know you can be in and out of there about 10 minutes. However, with donating plasma, you can be on the donation bed anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes. We do say for your first appointment to set aside about 90 minutes, but that would be the full time you're in center. So that would be when you come in, you do your questionnaire. A lot of our donors do their questionnaire in advance on the Give Blood app. Um, you'll then be taken into a screening room where our plasma associate or nurse will go over your questionnaire with you, ask if you have any health concerns, ask if you have any medications, then they'll take your height and weight, bring you over to the donation bed where you'll sit for 20 to 45 minutes. And I will say that it really depends on the donor. Some of our donors are really speedy and can get in and out in that 22 minutes. It, sometimes if you're really well hydrated, that process can go a little bit faster, but it will never be quite as quick as that whole blood donation where you're kind of in and out in 10 minutes. So what happens to plasma after it's collected? So once collected, it is picked up every two weeks from our center and sent to a fractionator. This fractionator breaks down the plasma into specialized proteins. The proteins are concentrated and processed into medications that we call plasma protein products. And the most in-demand plasma protein product is a medication called immune globulin. So from the time our plasma is picked up, sent to a fractionator, made into medications, uh, the time for that is about nine months. Once it's made into all the medications we need, it's sent back up here to Canada and we're able to use it for patients all across Canada. Another interesting fact between plasma and whole blood is for plasma, what we collect doesn't have a shelf life. So when we collect whole blood, we do need to hit a certain spot. We need to collect enough to meet the need for patients all across Canada, but we can't over collect because it does have a shelf life. Where this is different for plasma, every bit of plasma we collect is sent to our fractionator into, and made into medications. So we can't over collect plasma. So plasma protein products and medications which donated plasma is used 
it's used for a variety of treatments and diseases. So you can see on the screen here, it can be used for cancer, nervous system disorders, bleeding disorders, RH disease in newborns, severe burns, kidney disease, organ transplants, chicken pox and measles, surgeries, immune deficiencies, rare blood, or rare blood disorders, and that's just to name a few. And then you'll see at the top there what the plasma journey is. So your plasma donation, it's then combined with that thousands of other donations. The proteins are then separated and extracted. Then we make different plasma protein products and then it's delivered to health centers all across Canada. Some Canadians rely on plasma protein products to recover from just one isolated incident and others re uh, rely on plasma protein products for the rest of their life. So fractionation is the process of turning the collected plasma into specialized medications used by Canadians. So up here is an example of the impact each plasma donation has in creating medications that Canadians rely on to treat a variety of rare, life-threatening or chronic illnesses. As some patients rely on regular use of these treatments, it could take 130 donations to support a Canadian living with immune deficiency over just one year or 465 donations to create medications required to treat a Canadian living with chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. Try to say that five times fast. So let's try another one. How many donations do you think are needed to treat just one adult patient per year? Anyone have a good guess? It must be 100. Absolutely, you were right. <laughs> it could take over 100 donations to treat just one person for one year. So that really gives insight on why these plasma centers we've been opening all across Canada because that need is really increasing. So plasma donations made all the difference to Christina. Christina was engaged to be married and looking forward to starting a family when she was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness she'd never heard of. Immune thrombocenia, ITP, is a disorder which leads to abnormally low levels of blood cells called platelets, putting the patient at risk for severe bleeding. In her treatment journey, Christina relied on plasma-derived medication called immune globulin for years and, it could re and could require it again in the future. But thanks to plasma donations, she's able to say, nope, sorry illness, you're not going to get me and I will persevere. Christina and her husband, Paul, safely welcomed a daughter, Isabella, seven years ago. Isabella is now growing up with a mother who has a special perspective on the world. She's a hearing child of two deaf parents, and her mother, who also navigates the challenge of a rare illness, to lead a full active life. She has a powerful role model for strength and resilience. Christina says she works to instill the same attitude in her students as a teacher of American Sign Language at the post-secondary level. She describes education as her life purpose, which combines the passion for ASL in particular. Plasma donations have made all the difference to Christina, who because of donors building bridges between the worlds of hearing and the deaf. What an inspiring story and an example of how plasma does make all the difference. As part of our role, Canadian Blood Services is responsible for monitoring the amount of plasma available to meet the needs of patients all across Canada. For some time, we have been seeing a steady increase in the use and demand for plasma-derived products in Canada and around the globe. The need is actually four times greater than what we're currently collecting for plasma. To meet this need, we have to purchase plasma from the United States and the global market to help patients in Canada. But what we're, what we're really trying to do is open our own plasma-only centers so that way we can be a lot more self-sufficient here in Canada and less reliant on the United States and the global market. So this chart here shows the difference between the plasma collected by Canadian Blood Services, that's in the red, the line on the bottom, and the plasma required in Canada, and that's that blue line at the top there. The amount of plasma required is projected to in continue increasing. And I know this map is a little so small, but centers like ours that collect only plasma for use of in the manufacture of specialized medications are opening all across Canada. So the first centre was opened in Sudbury in August of 2020. It was followed by Lethbridge in December of 2020 and then Kelowna. And then 
Since then, we've opened centres in Ottawa, Brampton, Abbotsford, Vaughan and St. Catharines, with one more in Windsor opening this winter. So you can see in the map legend, some of the sites have only plasma offered of those sites, and other cities that are a little bit bigger do offer whole blood mobiles or other permanent sites. So one question we often get asked is whether these sites impact the ability to access whole blood products in the region. So people might be concerned that a family member or a loved one will no longer be able to access a transfusion when a plasma center opens and a whole blood center closes. But Canadian Blood Services manages the inventory of all blood and all blood related products, which includes plasma on a national level, to ensure that they're there when Canadians need them. So no matter if your city has a plasma centre or a whole blood centre, if you need plasma or if you need whole blood products, they will be available for you and your families to use. As remember, our vision is to um, help every patient, to match every need and to serve every Canadian. Now this here, if you haven't been there yet, this is our Lethbridge Plasma Donor Center. We're at a brand new location over by HomeSense and Lowe's. Um, night, lots of natural light, very comfy. Our design of the center is 12 beds and it reflects a donor center of the future concept. So we have a nice big social zone in there as well. So some of the other donor experience items, we have TVs over all the beds to enjoy a show, a sporting event. We have a refreshment center where our volunteers are based. They have blankets to provide, phone chargers, anything you might need on the bed. The process of donating plasma takes a little bit longer and you're able to donate more frequently. So we're really trying to make the experience in center the absolute best one you can have. That way you do wanna come back. And one element of the, is our engagement of our amazing volunteers. They provide menus on the donor bed to the donors and they can grab some snacks to go and put together a treat bag. They also engage with our donors during their, their donation to share information, detail and center activities or just to visit. Another thing we have in the center is we really try to support the local businesses. So every month the snacks that we have in center are from a local business. So for September we have Bootsma, we have some really good brownies and cookies. In October we have Ben's quality meats, so we have some great beef jerky. And then we also use Lakeview Bakery, Saunder Coffee House, uh, just to name a couple. So we are really proud that we are actually the second plasma center to open in all of Canada. We opened in December of 2020. December 22nd was right in the middle of COVID and there was a huge blizzard that day. So we really weren't sure what to expect. But when we opened, every single donor showed up for their appointment. I think the 7 a.m. donors actually beat the snowplow to the center. So if that doesn't show you what a great community we have and how engaged our donors are, I don't know what will. And the, one of the reasons that Lethbridge was chosen as a plasma center is because of its donor base. We had a really strong donor base from whole blood and we hoped we'd see that transfer over to plasma, which we did, and I'm very proud of that. To give you a little bit more background on how many people we see in the center, in 2022, we collected over 13,000 units of plasma. So one unit of plasma is one uh, donor. And then to break that down a little bit more, that was about 10,000 liters of plasma. So that's a lot of people that are helping save lives all across Canada. This shows you a little bit more of our center. So once you come in after you've done your questionnaire, either um, at the kiosk or on your phone, the plasma associate will take you into one of these screening rooms here and you'll see you can get your height and weight in there as well. And then that's our donor bed area with one of our nice cozy blankets that we're able to give you. And this is what our plasma machine looks like. So on the left, that's what the machine looks like before it's all set up and ready to go. On the right, that's after a full plasma donation and then we know it's done because the machine has lit up green. We often get questions if we can do such as whole blood plasma donations in the community, which we're not able to because these machines are very, very heavy to move. So we wouldn't be able to do them anywhere besides our plasma centers. A couple of questions that usually come up, how long does the plasma donation take? We say set aside about 90 minutes for your full time in the center. So that would be your screening, your donation, your post donation recovery, and then getting those snacks and being on your way. And then we have how much plasma is taken from each donation. 
So with plasma, we adjust the volume based on height and weight and how many times you've donated plasma in the past. So if you're a brand new plasma donor, we will start you at a smaller uh, amount, say about 562, and then we will slowly work you up. The highest you're able to give is 896 liters. And that would be about a full bottle here, which of liquid gold, as we call it. So because we only take that plasma from your blood, um, you're able to regenerate plasma in yourself within 48 hours. So even if you donated on a weekly schedule, that would be completely safe to do so. And then a donor's history of whole blood plasma and platelets is all tracked. So if you've donated a number of times in whole blood, say you're at 50 donations and then come over to plasma, that will still to continue to increase. So it'll just continue from 50, you don't start at zero again. So we've actually had some donors in hit some amazing milestones. In December, we had someone hit their 700th donation, which was fantastic to see. And then how will you feel after donating? Most people feel great after donating. They don't feel as tired usually after a plasma donation because you are getting those red blood cells back. But much as the same of donating whole blood, we do ask that you know, drink lots of fluids before you come in, have a good sleep, have a good meal. And then once you're finished donating, you're able to just go on your way just as you would any other day. Then we have some basic eligibility. So any healthy person who meets our eligibility criteria can donate plasma at centers across the country. Having a history of regular blood donations helps, but isn't always necessary. So, and then some people that weren't able to donate are eligible to donate whole blood might still be eligible to donate plasma. You do need to be at least 17 years old and the maximum age is 71. However, if you've donated at least once in your past, then there is no maximum age to uh, donate. And then there is a deferral period of three months for tattoos or piercings, and you do need to be at least 110 pounds. A couple other basic eligibility. Uh, donors are encouraged to check the acceptable prescription list on blood.ca, or you can call our 188 to donate check your medications, check your health conditions, um, and then if you are eligible to donate, then they can donate or they can book you for an appointment at the same time. One of the differences between uh, whole blood and plasma is malaria. Since the red cells are not collected as part of this donation, those who travel to malaria affected regions or had malaria and were able to donate whole blood are able to donate plasma. And then you do have a little bit of a deferral if you've gone to the dentist for a cleaning or had a surgery. But we always say check that eligibility before you come in, or when you do come in to donate, just bring a list of your medications and that way it's really easy for us to check them there. And then we have heard a few myths about donating plasma. We're always looking to uh, dispel. We have heard that the needles are bigger, uh, but the needle dur used during plasma is new, sterile, and the same size as the one that we use to donate whole blood. Most donors say they feel a slight pressure, never pain when the needle is inserted. We've also heard, people heard, have heard the, um, if you need to have a needle in each arm because you're getting some of those red blood cells back, but that isn't true either. Still just the one needle in your arm, your blood comes out just through that one needle and is given back to you through the same needle. We've heard, how do you know if the products you use will be safe if we're returning the red blood cells and platelets? How sterile is the packaging? So there's no greater risk to donating plasma. Each donation uses a new sterile needle and anything that your blood is in is all single use for you. So you'll see the staff open that right in front of you. We've also heard, is it not safe to donate plasma every two weeks? But there's no risk of being a regular plasma donor, whether it be weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever your schedule allows. Your body is able to fully replenish that plasma supply in less than 48 hours. And then some people do ask, we do check your hemoglobin levels before you come in, even though we're not collecting your whole blood. And the reason for this is if you have a low hemoglobin level, you might be like more likely to have a reaction or it's a sign that your body might be fighting something. So if your body's fighting something, we don't want to take plasma at that time. time <laughs> excuse me. We want to make sure you keep it and fight whatever your body's fighting. There are also three ways to book an appointment. Oh, I think I missed. We have also heard large volume plasma donors typically feel weaker after a plasma donation. That is not the case as well. A lot of donors don't feel quite as tired after a plasma donation. 
And then we have three ways to book an appointment. So we have our 188 to donate. You can download the Give Blood app, which is free to donate, or you can make an appointment on blood.ca. Or if you're in the area, you can always just come in, book an appointment in person. We often do have same day appointments available as well. And we do right now, uh, we have an amazing donor base here in Lethbridge, but we are really looking for new donors. Throughout COVID, Canadian Blood Services as a whole lost 31,000 donors. And because of that, we are really looking to bring in at least 200 new donors every month. We have a great, great donor base that comes on a you know, weekly, bi-weekly basis, but we're really hoping to grow that. Every week we have about 75 appointments that do still need to be filled. And with great timing is, if this sounded all really interesting, we actually have an open house tonight. So if you're interested in coming in for a tour, seeing the center in person, there's free food and drinks, there's some great door prizes, you can actually see some of our milestone donors donating and really get that, uh, you know, you can ask them questions. I know I'm a visual learner, so I love seeing things in person as well. Uh, so that will be from 5 to 7 p.m. And then also we have a very festive fall coming up. So in the month of October, you can pick up a pumpkin for our pumpkin carving contest. We have free pumpkins, which can be picked up. You bring them home and carve them. You bring them back to center and we'll take a photo. And then you have a chance to win this beautiful candy bouquet made by a uh, house sweet. So we'd like to see some great festive pumpkins this fall. That was it for my formal presentation. I know that was probably a lot of information, so I'd love to take some uh, questions if anyone has them. And if you have a question maybe later, that's my contact information, which I'm always available to answer questions as well. And I truly appreciate you all being such great listeners and participants today. It made it so nice. Next week, we talk about food, food banks, and the increasing need for food banks, which is a sad state of affairs, but that is today's reality. So I invite you to come out next week as well. Um, that's it. Please line up along the wall and uh, keep your preamble short and ask questions because we have an expert here that can answer all of them, I'm sure. Hi, Brenna. My name is Henning Mundel. I actually have two questions. One is, is plasma just one big potpourri versus blood A, B, uh, RH positive, RH negative, having to be separated? That's the one question. And the other one is, having lived quite a number of years in developing countries and have had amoeba and so on, they didn't want our blood. So what's the situation with plasma? Those are two great questions. So yes, for plasma, your blood type does not matter because all of the plasma, as he suggested, is pooled together. You are, if you are interested in knowing what your blood type is and you're a first time plasma donor, you will learn it after 48 hours and it shows up on your app or on your blood.ca account. As for eligibility for different locations, we do have some deferrals for certain locations across the world. I don't know them all off heart, but if you go on blood.ca or call that 188 to donate, they're able to double check those eligibility. But I know a few of them have um, been lessened in the last couple years, so I would double check because we are always working with our team to see if we can you know, remove some of those deferrals as well. Thanks, Brenna. I'm Ian Hurdle. Um, I was a large user of your products, not personally. I think the record traumatic with one person was 288 units. Um, there's two questions that I have for you. In the last 12 years, we've really changed some of the drugs we use for surgery, and we're now introducing it into medical conditions. Uh, I know for major bone surgery, our blood transfusion rates probably have dropped 60% with the use of a drug called transoxemic acid. And I wonder if that's starting to apply where the Red Cross sees that changing. The second thing is there's always been a bit of a controversy about plasma because if we're bringing it in from the states, uh, a lot of plasma was harvested in prison population. <laughs> Okay, two 
great questions. The first one um, for the exact type of medications that are used, I'm not a nurse at our center, so I can't speak to that directly, but I can find an answer for that and get back to you. As for bringing in plasma from the states, I mean, we do have really tight screening of what we are allowed to bring in from Canada uh, and from the United States and from the global market. But that's also just a reason of why we are really wanting to increase our sufficiency here in Canada. We would love if we only going forward were able to collect across Canada and how we're able to do that is really bringing in more donors to each of these plasma centers. Because you're right, um, you know, the states are different from us for many ways and we'd love to just be able to collect plasma and keep it within Canada. So that is kind of our end goal. Terry Shellington is my name. <clears throat> uh, I have a comment and then a couple of questions, but uh, I'm one of these ancient types that uh, learned to give blood back in the 60s. Uh, our, at the University of Saskatchewan, there was a competition between different colleges about which uh, college could get the highest percentage of student population to give blood, and they were fiercely fought campaigns. Uh, so, I, so I've experienced the, the, the morphing from uh, from Red Cross donating to to um, uh, to blood services, and I, I would just want to make the comment that the um, it's such a wonderful change. The Red Cross donation system was kind of like an assembly line, and uh, you'd, you'd be giving in a huge auditorium, and you might w wind up at the door behind a bus of folks from out of town, which was great, but 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 anyway, big lineup. Anyway, now you make an appointment and they know your first name, and uh, it's quite a good experience. <clears throat> um, yes, I really appreciate their, their uh, care for people. Uh, a couple of questions. Um, is there an upper age limit to giving blood? Somebody asked me that last week, and I thought I knew the answer, but you, you will have a different comment. Secondly, I suspect the reason that we have American plasma coming in is because many of the areas of the states pay for for donations, and I'm curious whether any discussion around, I think there's pros and cons, uh, but uh, are, is there a discussion going on in Canada and in, within blood services about whether or not to pay for blood? Nice, right, some great questions. And I'm so glad to hear that you have such a great experience in center. I will say our staff are excellent. Even if you're a first time donor and a little nervous, they will take such great care of you. They'll make sure that you understand the process fully and that you're comfortable through the whole donation. Uh, for the upper age limit for plasma, if you it is 71. However, if you've donated at least once any time in your past, then there is no upper age limit. And then for your other question, oh, paid for plasma. So we at Canadian Blood Services really rely on the generosity of donors throughout Canada, and there aren't any plans to, to change that at this time. Oh, wait, sorry, and one more thing. Uh, you're talking about competitions. Uh, we love to do that here in Lethbridge as well. We'll be doing a plasma playoffs competition later this year uh, between our sports teams and clubs in the, uh, on the campus at the college. And we ran this last year and it went very well. The students got really nice competitive energy. We had so many new donors in, so we're definitely bringing that back this year. My name is Maureen Hawkins. Um, when I was younger, I tried to give blood several times. I was turned down because I hadn't had enough sleep last night. I was turned down because I might have a cold. I was turned down because of another a medication I was taking. Could you put that phone number up again so that um, before coming, before even making an appointment, I, people can find out whether they're actually eligible? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, it seems to me that that's an important issue. Um, and um, you're nonprofit, right? Correct. Okay. And so how, where do you get the money to buy plasma from the states? So we're funded by the provinces and... Use the mic. We're funded by the provinces and territories for all uh, the work that we do. And on the note of the phone number, I do have cards for anyone that wants to know our phone number, our center hours. You can also scan it to book an appointment too. So I'll give you one of those. And this is probably something you don't know, but I was curious. How does 
immune globulin. Is that what they used to call it? gamma globulin? And how does it increase, help somebody increase the number of platelets they produce? That is a great question, which I actually do not know the answer to, but I could find out and definitely give it to you because that's a great question. I'll get your contact information after. Uh, Hello, uh, my name is Pat, Pat McKee. Oh, wow. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I just wanted to know, once the plasma is collected, where is it processed? Your name? I did. She said, she said Pat McKee. Uh, Pat McKee. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Uh, so our plasma, once it's collected every two weeks, it's actually sent to a fractionator in North Carolina because we don't currently have a fractionation facility here in Canada. So it's all sent there, it's made into medications, it takes about about nine month process, and then it's all sent back to Canada to be used in hospitals and health centers across Canada. So our plasma that we give is in there for nine months? The, the process, yeah, the process to take the specialized proteins out of the plasma and make it into medications, yeah, nine months. Hi, Bev, Bev Mundell Atherstone. And I'm the one who is passing around the sakwa jars for your donations. And remember, as Kadud said, we don't like it to make noise, so put in something very quiet, like a five or a 10. You know, they're very quiet, and it doesn't interrupt the Q&A. Thank you for your presentation. I do have a question for you. <clears throat> when we gave blood before, it was a one-way process. The blood came out of us, went into collection, bats, whatever, and uh, we were out of there. I'm quite concerned about the idea that the blood is taken out of us and then the plasma is taken away and then through your system, uh, who knows how clean it is, it comes back into us. So I'd like to know about the cleanliness between people giving and um, our, pl our blood being returned to, the, to us. Because I think that's where, you know, that's where infections could occur and so on. Thank you. Yes, some great questions. Um, for the how safe it is, I will say, so this is what it would look like, and this would have a needle at the end. Uh, this packaging would all be opened in front of you. And then your blood and plasma is going back and forth just through this little tube here. And, and it is spun in a centrifuge, which is this, and spins the plasma out. So these three items are all only used by one donor. Then we put this in the back, everything else is put in our bio waste, and then we have a brand new stuff that's open for the next donor. So we'd never have to worry about your blood touching anyone else's at any point. And was that your only question, or did you have one before that? No. Okay. So my name is Mark Gettle. One of the restrictions I know is if you've lived in Europe during the mid-90s, during the uh, mad cow disease, whatever, I'll have to check to see if I can donate now because I was not able to donate. I lived in France in 1995, so that's one thing. The other question is, would it be possible to extract plasma from donated whole blood before its expiry? <coughs> Yes, for the first question about eligibility, I know that our team is currently looking into that specific deferral, and I do hope that going forward, I think it would lessen, but I would double check that for sure. Um, as for taking the plasma out of your whole blood, that's a great question, and I wish we could. We actually have a lot of donors come and say, can't you just take it all, my whole blood, my plasma, and you guys do the rest? But how our machines are set up, um, they are set up to only collect that plasma. And then, you know, at whole blood sites, they just collect whole blood, which we also still need to keep up with across Canada, so we can't really combine the two um, up that way, at least not at this time. Hi, my, my name is Dennis, Dennis Connolly. Uh, I, I want to ask you, um, well, I'm I, uh, not allowed to give blood because I was in England for two years. Uh, when Mad Cow came across and they said no giving blood, would, it, would I be all right for plasma? So there is still that deferral right now in Lethbridge for plasma, but I think in the next year or so we could really see that um, that lesson as we talk to some of our uh, scientists that are currently working on some of the deferrals, and I know that some changes for deferrals are coming in the next kind of year here. 
So we'll be able to. So you, yeah, stay tuned. Be calling you know the 188 to donate, and we'll make sure to put messaging out when any eligibility does change. So if that affects anyone in the community, then you would all know as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, my name is uh, Knut Peterson. Uh, I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about, as, as this is, plasma is increasingly being used for things, how did they get by in the old days without having plasma donations? I mean, I like to say that I think a lot more people, you know, lived in pain or, you know, didn't have the proper quality of life that they do have now that they have these medications. We've talked to a number of recipients, you know, throughout Canada that are um, recipients of plasma and they talked about how it really did change their life. We had this young post-secondary girl. She wasn't able to go to school. She wasn't able to keep up with her friends or studies. And when she finally got the medication she needed, it was like night and day for her. She was able to have that quality of life, go back to school, do all the, you know, kind of regular post-secondary things that she wanted to. So I know that the donated plasma really does touch the lives of patients and I mean we're I'm so glad that we have the medical advancements that we do know do have now to help make the difference to Canadians. About five years ago there was a bit of a controversy going on because they were going to open a private plasma harvesting center in uh, Saskatoon where they would pay people. Does Do any of these exist in Canada? Yes, so there are some paid for plasma sites within Canada, not through Canadian Blood Services, but another uh, organization. And I will say that you might have heard a few months ago that we uh, came into an agreement with Griffles about um, opening plasma centers in Canada. So they will also be opening plasma centers in Canada to help us reach the plasma sufficiency level that we're hoping to get at. But we do have uh, a say on where they open and kind of how they do their um, donations just to make sure that we're getting the people we need in the community as well. But here in Lethbridge, there isn't any plans to have um, either a Griffel site or a paid for plasma site. Thanks a lot for your presentation. Uh, my husband didn't say that, but he's, uh, uh, in uh, just under the 200 shot donation thing, uh, uh, so uh, plasma, of course. Now, I can't donate because I think uh, one of my blood pressure medications prevent me from doing so. But I'm curious: um, does our healthcare system cover uh, the drugs that are being produced from the plaza to help people, uh, or do they have to pay? They do have to have, have their own pharma care plan. I do think that that depends on the situation. So obviously if you were in a car accident or something and you needed blood or plasma, absolutely it'd be there for you. In terms of the medication you might need for the rest of your life, I can't answer on that as just I don't know, but I can find the answer for you because that is a great question. So if, if you send the information to the SACPO uh, email, then the, Does that work? you can see that we get it. Yes. Different kinds of information. Oh, perfect. Yes, I'll do that. <laughs> Brian, uh, I'm curious to know uh, the demographics of people donating plasma and are there any, what should I say, specific groups of people in, in Lethbridge area that donate more per capita than other groups type of thing. Uh, I'm maybe talking about minorities, uh, certain nationalities or former nationalities. Uh, are there any uh, difference? Uh, have you noticed any differences in, in uh, people donating? New app age groups. <laughs> yes, we do have a great uh, diversity of people who donate in the center. I will say right now, 
Uh, the highest people that donate are, we do have a lot of post-secondary and college kids in because we do really see when they go home for the summer, we do kind of lose some of our donors there. Um, but we do have a wide range of people donating from anywhere from when they hit their 17th birthday and they're finally able to donate. We've had a number of people come in on their birthday to donate, which is amazing to see. But then we have a lot of our older people donate as well. We had so many people come over from whole blood to transfer over to plasma, which we were really happy to see. We have about 20 different colonies that come in on a regular basis to donate as well, which is fantastic. And then we also have a bit more uh, we have a bit more women than men donating right now. Not a huge difference, but I think about 10% more women at this time. And then we do also have what we call our Partner for Life program. So what I do is I work with different businesses in town to sign them up to become a donor. I help them set a pledge with their group, um, what, what a goal that they try to hit for the year. They can come in all together as a group. It's great team building. We really promote them in center on our media wall with our logos. We promote them on social media. So it's a really great way to give back as well if you know anyone that would be interested in doing that. I'm Bach. <laughs> uh, so I'd like to know, um, do you make presentations to high schools and do you go into university classes uh, such as the nurses or uh, law enforcement at the college and so on and, make, and let them know about this? And if so, uh, how do people set these presentations up? Such a great question. Yes, we do presentations and they would be all set up through me. And I'm always looking for more opportunities to be in front of businesses, classes, any kind of um, group that is interested in becoming a donor. Uh, so they can all be set up through me and I'll give you my card afterwards so you can contact me for that. Um, High school? Yes, high school. We did a couple last year. We'd like to really increase that this year. As we have a lot of our older donors tell us, I started donating when I was in high school. I started donating because someone asked me, someone did a pre presentation then, and that's how we get you know donors for life. So we'd love to be in front of more high schools if we can, answer those questions and hopefully you know show them the excitement of becoming a donor and supporting your community. And we also do post-secondary. <laughs> so we used to have a club on campus called Lethbridge Lifesavers. Uh, they, students all did graduate. So this year, we're actually working to um, get new people in that club. And they often do a lot of presentations on their own to classes. So we're just kind of in the works of having a few students interested, getting them up and running. And then you should see them on campus doing different, a lot of times they'll have tents at some of the sporting games, some of the you know, career fair, anytime where there's a big um, kind of event at UofL, we're hoping to have some students on campus there providing info as well. So Mark Gettle again. Uh, could you recap a little bit of what happened during the tainted blood scandal and how Red Cross lost their, uh, their mandate to collect blood and then the blood services was formed? I can't speak a lot too much on the details of it. I can just speak that we had the Creever report come out and we did have very different guidelines from Red Cross over to Canadian Blood Services. But also we really had to win back the trust of you know, the community. At that time, our CEO um, was saying actually earlier this week, people might not have been as willing to say, I work for you know Red Cross or at the time because there was that scandal and there was so much pain caused from that situation and so to have Canadian Blood Services come in there was a lot of pressure and a lot of eyes on us to make sure that we were doing things properly that we were really safeguarding our processes that we were always doing continuous improvement to make sure everything was safe everything was tested and then to build back that trust which did take a while you know it isn't something that could happen overnight but we were able to do that and now Canadian Blood Services is very well known. I mean, I like to think so. I mean, I know I'm biased, but it is well known and we do have such a large amount of donors across Canada. So I can't speak into any more details of it, but we do have a great video that I can send out that does have some more details on that situation if you'd like. When I send my email, I can include that too. This is very hard for me. Um, I have one question to ask first. 
I was diagnosed with cancer three years ago. They said five years before I could give plasma again. Is that still? Yes. Okay. I have a daughter who died three and a half years ago. I've never taken this heart off since the day she died. I don't know if anybody knows what this heart represents. <coughs> Obviously not. You get this at the donation. When Shelly was a donator, she gave five organs at least. Uh, she fell off a ladder and was brain dead. She has a husband and two boys who are ultimate donors. My other children have donated. I um, just want to tell you, I know this is very personal. I just want to tell you this story of a card we got through the transplant team from a young girl who got my daughter's lungs. She has to skip her process. She was on life support. And when she woke up, she thought she was in heaven. The lights were bright and her parents were there telling her that she had new lungs. She celebrates December the 5th as a new birthday for her on the day of my daughter's death. And I'm sorry I'm personal, but I need to tell people. I'm a plasma donor, can't give her another two years, but we can't give at an older age, but certainly our kids and grandkids. And I think if we can get that out to them. We had some time with my grandson who's at the university. He told me that he's going to go to the hospital to be, uh, is it stem cells? Stem. Yeah, stem cells. He said him and another boy. And I think if you keep these young people going with this, because as I say, at my age, I'm, I can still, I hope I can give in two years, but if we keep the young people involved in this, it's life giving. As I say, my daughter gave life to at least five people that we know of. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for sharing that story. And that is really, a great reminder of what we do matters and we you know we'll continue to do so so we really appreciate when we get to hear stories from the community as well yeah thank you very much for sharing that story <clears throat> uh, just before we wind up uh, I want to give you an opportunity to for your final thought about this whole uh, topic that you talked about. Um, but before that, could you just explain the relationship between federal <coughs> Canadian Blood Services? Is that a federal uh, entity? And, and how does the provincial uh, jurisdiction intertwine with with the Canadian Blood Services? That would be a great question for our government relations team. So we have an entire team that works on promoting Canadian Blood Services, both on the provincial and uh, federal level. I know they're always hard at work that way. Um, and I will say just kind of locally, we do have a lot of support from City Council and from the members um, here in Lethbridge who come in to donate, who also make sure to promote the need for plasma um, themselves too, which we really appreciate. But I can get further info on kind of the relationship federally for you, absolutely. And I will put my contact information again on the screen. If you have any questions from this, don't hesitate to call or email. If you have an event that you'd love us to be at to help promote plasma, whether it's in your workplace or any of the groups that you're in, I'm always so appreciative to be able to talk in front of a group of people. And you guys were all amazing today. So you made a great presentation and I really appreciate it. If you can't come tonight to the open house, but you would love to still see the center, give me a call or email and we can set up a tour and you can come in that time.